Well, that's interesting. I think they just did a quickie. <laughs> I think they yeah, just did a quickie. Time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for this meeting oh, you, Janice, you Chris. We're not Hi, talking Janice. about you know who because they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> No. The, the press are beginning to make an awful lot of what Harry's saying and his lack of knowledge of the royal family. Yeah. Like he's That's saying funny. that the children won't be princes or princess, uh -huh. princesses. And he said, but that goes away back to... Oh, back to uh, George, because I went back to King George and it, wasn't her, it was their grandfather. Yes. It's only than that. I believe it's only the... Uh, oh, the highest prince, like the Prince of Wales family, right? Yes. That's, that's exactly it. But well, more don't, you think, don't you think the, the British press are doing this to come up? I have more. The, the <laughs> <state. laughs> Sorry, Anne, what did you say? I think they're doing this. The British press are trying to cover up all the mistakes of Prince Andrew by using Harry as a sort of fall guy. Oh, I don't know. No. Maybe, maybe I. Possible. But, Possible. but they're, they're also on about Harry saying he was left destitute. His mother left him £10 million. No, no. He admitted... No, he didn't say that. He said he, he, he did. did. No. He said that uh, his father cut him off, but he had his mother's money. Yeah. Money to uh -huh. yeah, He did say yeah. that. Yeah. No, he did say that. They're going to try and twist things around. Oh, yeah. Where they are. Okay, I think it's we're right at eleven o'clock right now. So uh, in case we have no more discussion on the Queen and the, and the <laughs> uh, it just like somebody said to me the other day, we got a woman that has a fifty million dollar house interviewing somebody with a fifteen million dollar house, trying to make this relevant to us. You know? Yeah, it's true. I mean, really. Okay, so anyway, let me just let me let me let me let me just start this. Okay. Where are we? I gotta get my acting gear here. Okay, stop. Okay, here we go. From beginning. Okay, do a share. And it's always good to not be able to get myself in gear here. Why is it not going? Patience, patience, even though I've done this a few times. <laughs> Where are we? Here we go. Share screen. Share screen two. Okay. Let me go back to uh, my presentation. Here we go from beginning. Okay. You should be able to see it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So where we're going today is Belize. And uh, the beginning here, I'm just give you a little bit of background, but uh, Belize uh, until 1973 was known as uh, British Honduras and got its, its uh, independence officially in 1981. Um, I went there a few years back, I think it's been 12, 13 years now uh, with another couple Anne and I went with Jamie and Elaine who um, are going to interject as we go to uh, any comments. <laughs> like I, I told Jamie, I said, just give me your input as I go if I miss something. So Belize, so we all can see, is uh, there's the United States and there's a very sh short sliver um, of Belize. And uh, I just got some people coming in. I have to allow in, sorry. So Belize is a, a country, like I said, right uh, faces the Caribbean, and it's a relatively small country. Um, you can see there on that map, basically that uh, where you have Belize City is where everybody flies into. And the little red lines are all the roads. And as you can see, the country really doesn't have many roads. So as a beginning, just to give you an overview, we ended up from Belize City, ended up driving to uh, Bella Bella Palm and then down to Duringa and then down the coast. 
but we had to end up going back up again because you can see there are no roads that go through the middle of the country and we ended up in San Ignacio. So um, it, it, we're gonna be all over Belize right now, but we're gonna start off in, uh, in uh, Belize city. So here is Jamie and Elaine a couple of years ago uh, arriving. Uh, they obviously, they always want departure fees and this is the uh, uh, airport in Belize. Our hotel in Belize City. Belize City is one of those places that uh, is not really very interesting, the town. It's just a, a very large town, a bunch of poor people who are trying to eke out a living. Uh, but this was a very nice hotel and it was right on the water. So there's Jamie and my wife sitting there and uh, where you can see our hotel was just right on the water because it, it is just a, a beautiful place to be. We ended up renting a, a vehicle. So this vehicle here um, ended up uh, being our transportation around the country because oh, boy, are around. Boy, I can't wait. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, somebody's got to, anyway. So uh, it's just our rental car. I, I put a couple of pictures, older pictures in of Belize City. This was a picture that was taken in 1914. And it gives just a little bit of the flavor of Belize at the time. Um, Belize, this is another picture I took off the internet and uh, before I go to my own pictures, but this is a, uh, you can see it's a relatively flat area with a, a river that flows in. They have a bridge that is a hand, hand operated bridge that allows boats to go up, but obviously being hand operated, it doesn't operate that many, that much. So this is uh, one of my pictures, obviously, from the bridge looking out. And you can see a little bit of the flavor of what the area looked like. Um, very, just, in, just something totally different. As we walked around Belize City, this was one of the stores that I saw, which, is, uh, which made no sense to me, but it's uh, licensed to sell drugs and poisons. So I don't know which is the worst, the poison or the drugs. But anyway, it, it was just one of those, one of those uh, signs. So as we leave Belize City, because Belize City by itself really is not very interesting. It's, it's just a, a town of uh, ramshackle people living, uh, trying to make a living because it's not a, it's not a very prosperous place in general. So as we leave, we're now heading, our first place we head to is the Belize Zoo. And so the Belize Zoo, if you remember, Jamie was uh, an interesting place. <laughs> it was great. <clears throat> Thank you. It was very really interesting. I'm not much of a zoo person, but we went partly because there was several species of animal that they're going to have that you're not going to see in a lot of other places. So, and it was well done. I mean, for what it was, it was well done. Well, these these animals were basically animals that had been uh, either captured or captured in the sense meaning that they had been. Uh, uh, hurt or, or put into a, another zoo. But anyway, this was a basically a rescue zoo is what it was called. Yeah, yep. This, this was one of the animals there. It was called an ornate hawk, uh, just a, a beautiful animal. Yeah, I like birds, obviously. A river otter. These are just some of the pictures. One of the interesting things that I enjoyed is that this was an orchid uh, and it's an, uh, an epiophyte and they basically attach to the tree, uh, but they're not a parasite in the sense that they don't kill the tree. Uh, they're like an air plant that attaches to the tree. And we saw, you see a lot of those as time goes along. Wrong direction. So as we leave, as we leave the zoo, we're now heading out and you start to see some of the, how the people live as we're driving away. And most of, of, of that area of uh, Belize is relatively low lying. So the houses that you see are always off the ground because a couple of hurricanes come in and a hurricane comes in and this just uh, would wash the house away. But you can see they've put everything up on stilks. So some of the housing, this one looked like it was pretty much dilapidated, but it again was off the ground so that uh, they were able to be able to survive when the hurricanes went through. 
Uh, here we have a small little town um, that we came into. Uh, again, just a typical Belizean town. Everything three, four, or five feet off the ground. So our first place we overnighted after leaving Belize City was a place called the Hopkins Inn, and this was uh, actually one of our favorite, or my one of my favorite places. Uh, this is right on the water. Um, Hopkins Inn was, uh, I don't know who built it, but they built these uh, concrete uh, buildings and they built them. You can see where the ocean is or the Caribbean is, how close. But again, it's off the sand because in a hurricane, it would have a huge amount of water coming in. And being that it's a block building, it'll survive. And being that they have flow underneath, uh, there's no problems. Was that in Palencia? No, that was in uh, Hopkins, uh, Hopkins. Oh, the name of the town was Hopkins, okay. Yep, and here is Anne sitting in front of our facility, uh, cooling her jets <laughs> or getting, getting a little enjoyable time out. But uh, you can see from our, uh, our, our hotel out, from where Anne's sitting, we're looking the other direction. There's Jamie standing on the beach and you can see how crowded the beaches are, you know, it, uh, I, I, I think bottom line is that most Belizeans don't look at the beach as, as a place to hang out. Uh, but, you know, as an American, we're down there and going, oh my God, look at these beautiful beaches. So you got beautiful water there. Happened to be there's a, a local who came in one of his dugout canoes and uh, he'd been out fishing, obviously. So just a, just a, a, lo a local, something a little different flavor. So as we're leaving the area here, uh, we have Elaine and, and Jamie. We all are. It's it's pretty warm in Belize, and uh, because you're uh, down the Tropic of Cancer, set quite a bit south. Um, so fluids are the key, and you can see Elaine here uh, stocking up on on fluids. There's no liquor involved, but it's just it's just all water. So where we're heading towards right now is the uh, Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary, and it's a, an amazing place. Um, it basically is a jaguar preserve, a 12,000 acre jaguar preserve in the middle of Belize. They have uh, moved this aside so because the jaguar itself as an animal really doesn't have that much uh, habitat left that he can call his own. So uh, that's, that's where we're heading to right now. So as we're going there, um, obviously Belize having a lot of water, they have waterfalls and it's hot. So every time we would see anything that looked like water, it would be something that we'd want to jump into. Um, as you can see here, there's, there's both Jamie and Elaine, Elaine who gets uh, warm rather quickly. <laughs> yeah, overheated. That was a hike we took to the top of the mountain, I think. You did, you did, Elaine. There. Yeah, that was, a, that was a hot day. <laughs> and walking up, you can, hear, um, you can hear howler monkeys. And there are howler monkeys everywhere and it's the most eerie sound to hear these monkeys up in the trees howling and at first when you first hear it you think oh my gosh what is that but um you get used to it but that was that was a fun hike yep yeah well you you were being stressed right there i can tell it's like how much farther need to do i have yep. to go that's that still happens today barry <laughs> <laughs> So here, here we are now at the top of the mountain. What we're doing here is just, it, it's, it's, it's one of those beautiful places. It's a 12,000 acre preserve, like I said. And as far as you can see, you see nothing but jungle the way the Mayans would have seen it, you know, 5,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago. But we're looking towards Guatemala. So that's uh, Guatemala in the background and uh, Belize in the foreground. It's just, it's, it's spectacular. I mean, it's, 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 it's as original as you can ask. Uh, yeah, very area. wild. Yeah, as you can actually. So as we were going around in this place, it turned out that there was a, an airplane that we came across. So I didn't, we didn't know this until later, but there was a, a Dr. Rabinowitz uh, who was a, a person who tagged Jaguars in the 
70s, I think it was, or 80s. Um, anyway, he crashed his airplane as he was taking off. So the jungle, you just, when you crash something, it's not worth trying to get it out. So here, here we are looking at his wreckage. At first, it looked like we were looking for bodies, but there were no bodies. So here I am trying to captain a dead airplane, but you know, not able to go anywhere. So after we left the coxcomb area, we headed out to another area called Placentia. And Placentia is a, a, a beach community, very much like say Santa Cruz would be in California. Um, it's just a, a great place to hang out. Um, wrong direction. Um, so Placentia is is just it's it's where am I going? It's just a great uh, just a, a beach community. So in the beach community, we have to obviously find a, a place to overnight. And so uh, I think Jamie found this originally, but uh, you can see these little cabins that they built out of concrete uh, where you can spend the night uh, in Placentia. So again. That's my wife's second husband there, Jamie. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're matrimonial vows, which they did not uh, consecrate. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh. but this is <laughs> it's just, a, just a pretty picture. So what was interesting about the trip is that we didn't have reservations. The only reservations that we had were the first two nights in Belize and Belize City. And we had a very, very nice room in that beautiful old hotel. And, but Belize City didn't feel really comfortable. So we rented the Jeep and drove out of town and had no reservations in advance. <laughs> so all of these beautiful places that we were able to find, we just found by looking in our guidebook. Our, you know, we each had, each couple had a guidebook and we would read what we wanted to do each day and we'd look at the map. You can see in this picture, I'm looking at the map and then we'd get on our way. And uh, it was, it was really a, it was an adventure and it was very easy traveling. Well, we didn't even, we didn't even know where we wanted to go. We just would, every morning we'd say, well, should we go north, south, east or west today? and just kind of make it up as we went along. It was great. The, gr the group, Jamie, uh, it, uh, most of my vacations are like this. You know, it's, it's a wing and a prayer and, uh, and the adventure is the, is the vacation. So here we are again, just we see a, a, one of the locals boats, you know, they, to be able to get the boat in and out of the water, but they've got a, a truck top to be able to get out of the, uh, uh, out of the uh, uh, facility. So as we leave here, um, we leave the area, we're now heading out and we come across what's called St. Herman's Blue Hole. And so it's just a place that you pull over. And so Anne and Elaine, uh, because it's water, you first have to get into the water. So what you have is the ladies cooling down. Um, and it turned out that inside of this cave in the background, there were some Mayan artifacts. I didn't add a lot of pictures because they weren't really very good of the inside, but uh, we were able to swim inside and get, get in. So we left that little swimming area and uh, somebody had told us about this lodge uh, that was about six or seven miles down this dirt road. And they said, it's a really cute lodge that you really guys were really like. And so uh, we leave and we're now on a, on a uh, uh, expedition, you can see the quality of the road that we're on and with our car. And so all of us are going, okay, where, where are we going <laughs> again? So we ended up um, actually in a little area, there was a, a man from South Africa um, who during apartheid uh, wanted to leave South Africa and he was looking for places in the world to, to, to build something. And he found Belize and he found this little area, bought some property and as you can start to see, uh, he built um, this little development and he called it Black Rock. Um, it's just a, a beautiful development uh, with these individual little houses that you uh, can rent from him for the day. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a piece of uh, heaven in the middle it of the- It was beautiful. 
it's, uh, it's an off-grid um, uh, eco lodge. He actually made his own power by getting, uh, he had a, a water turbine uh, that generated electricity um, for, the, uh, for the property. He actually hiked a couple of miles with his son up into the jungle to bring water down to a, a turbine that then generated electricity for the property. And then that's the main lodge. Right, that, that, that is the main lodge and it's looking from the river, the, what's called the McCall River, which you'll see in a second from down below. Uh, but it, it was one of those magical places that, uh, uh, that when you stand there having coffee in the morning, which you can start to see Elaine doing right there. I mean, it, it's just second to none in the world to be able to have this. And uh, you got a cup of coffee, you're sitting there watching the toucans fly, watching a river go by, and you're in the middle of the jungle. And this, this man, just as a side thing, had built this, most of this place himself. Um, and so he used local materials, like you can see the, the, the railings down below. He had just had the locals uh, take the trees and, uh, you know, skinned them out and painted them. But, you know, most everything he brought in himself and did, but it was just a magical place. Here's the ladies in the morning time having their teas, watching again the world go by, which is, you know, a tough thing to have to do. <laughs> So uh, again, uh, the workers here who built all of this, I, I remember asking them, I said, in California, we call our workers Mexicans. And uh, I said, what do you call your workers? And he says, we call them Guatemalans. <laughs> and I said, really? Oh, okay. So it turns out that the labor force that the Belizeans have is primarily from Guatemala because they are poorer than the, than the Belizeans. So, you know, levels of poverty is, is what it comes down to. So the next day, uh, Jamie and I decided that we wanted to go down to the river. And so we wanted to, we rented a canoe from them or got a canoe from them to float down the river. And this is called the McCall River. And uh, so again, because it's water, there's Jamie in the water <laughs> trying to uh, get a little bit of coolness. But one of the things in the water is that there's a lot of fish. So here I am standing in the water and you can see the fish coming around. It's uh, almost like one of these tanks in Southeast Asia. They put your feet in where the, the fish come out to take the skin off your feet or try to pick at your feet. But anyway, a lot of fish. They're baby piranhas. <laughs> that would make a good story, Elaine. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> So here again, you know, as we're as we're taking the canoe down the river, you know, Jamie wants to take another swim, which is obvious we all do all the time because it's warm. Um, you know, it's it's just spectacular because we ended up going from Black Rock basically all the way down the river, which is this pristine uh, jungle river, which I'm sure there was danger everywhere, but we didn't. Fe I didn't feel it at least. You know. Um, there was some. We never asked. We uh, never asked about. We never asked about crocodiles either. But <laughs> or 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 anything. We we're just typical naive people. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, some local people who were doing some washing along the way. That uh, you know, mother doing her wash with her kids. There's the captain right there. You know, so put him in the back because he has lots of experience with with canoes. Again, some swimming, spe spectacular river. And then we ended up in San Ignacio. And San Ignacio is the, the town just before you go into Guatemala. So uh, we finished uh, our, our hike down. There was a local, uh, the local Black Rock driver was uh, picked up our canoe and he drove us back up to Black Rock, which is up that seven mile road. To my wife, who was waiting on the deck with her tea, watching the life go by, and uh, we left there, and we're now heading out uh, again, and uh, we find that, that, uh, that there are lots of caves all over um, Belize, and this was a very large cave area that was uncovered, it said 1989, and most of the pottery and things that they found there were found from, they were archived from between seven and 900 AD. 
So it's just one of these spectacular areas that you just, again, it's hard to believe. There's a lane down by the river because the river flows through this cavern and they call this the cathedral. And they called it that you can see we're now inside looking out. It's just this massive cave area where river flows through. There's just spectacular. And you can imagine the Mayans many years ago, you know, having ceremonies inside. I took a couple of pictures off the internet. This was a skeleton uh, that was found inside. And uh, it had, it was a young person. They said it had two vertebrae crushed and they ended up calling her the crystal maiden, but they found many other uh, artifacts and uh, bodies. So they don't know if it, what, what it really was. Leaving this area, we drove on and uh, something I had never seen before. This was a teak plantation. These, this farmer here was planting teak. I had obviously seen teak most of my life but never knew what a tree looked like. So it's something different. We continued on and uh, there was another river and all of a sudden it looked like there had been a forest fire. And uh, this area here uh, had been devastated by what's called the Southern Pine Bark uh, Beetle. And it basically destroyed about 80% of the pine trees in the area. And it was a beetle infestation. So it, it looks horrendous, but again, being warm, the first thing you wanna do is you see water. And so here's my wife in a lane heading down to the water. And as Jamie beat us to it, he's already in the water and uh, going for a quick swim, a quick dip. There he is, hello, hello. So as we left here, our next stop, uh, because we're looking for a place to spend the night, we found this place called Five Sisters Lodge. Uh, and it was in the middle of this pine forest. And so our hotel room or our lodge, whatever you want to call it, our cabana or, or hut, uh, this was where we spent the night. And so it's just a, a pr relatively primitive place, but very nice inside. So here's my wife checking out the accommodations, you know, um, very reasonable. So the area was just a you know, typically beautiful uh, area. Um, the trees are just second to none in the coloring. So from the lodge up below, looking down what their claim to fame is, is what are called the Five Sisters. And it's the five waterfalls down there. And we were not there on a high flow time period. So, but you can still see the water. That was a beautiful lodge. Wasn't that it? was just really, really beautiful. I think we stayed there a couple of nights. Yep. And uh, yeah, and, and back to Black Rock. I think when we checked into Black Rock, we thought we would just stay there one night. <laughs> and the next morning we said, oh no, this is just too special. And we, I think we, I don't know if we spent another one or two, but we stayed longer because it was just beautiful. Yeah. It's it, the problem is so many so much of the world. It's uh, like uh, you have to be able to just stay, and so because you never know what's so beautiful. I mean, here's Jamie again, wanting to look, get in the water. So, first one on the other side, ready to dive into the water. So this is the lodge looking from uh, looking at us over having dinner, um, and you can see this gentleman, whoever it was, built this many years ago. But it's just a it's just a great place. So here's Miss Elaine on the morning uh, with her cup of coffee, with her guidebook and looking down at uh, the sisters. I think, you know, it's just, uh, again, just special place. So again, caves in Belize. So we are look, we're told that down this road, another four or five miles, uh, there's another set of caves. So being the adventurer people we are, we decided to go down this road. And as we do, uh, we come across this river. Well, at first, we don't know how deep the river is. And so Jamie volunteers his wife to walk ahead across the river to see are there any areas that we couldn't pass in our, in our car. So she hikes up her dress, but it turned out to be just a very small uh, depth, maybe a couple of feet. Um, do you remember that, Elaine? Oh, yeah. He <laughs> fed me to the piranhas. All right. Well, you're here. You're here now. <laughs> to, my, to my defense, I did send her in the water 
but um, she was the only one in a bathing suit. <laughs> Good excuse, Jamie. Actually, I don't think you sent me, Jamie. I think I volunteered. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, here we are going, taking the car across. And so where we ended up was, and I think the guy was an American, but obviously somebody has either been drinking or smoking too much most of his life. Uh, but he was the guy in charge of renting a canoe. And so what do you rent a canoe for is to go into side of the, uh, the cave. So here the guy gives, I can't remember what we paid, but he gives you a flashlight. There's a battery sitting inside and he sends you off in this canoe. And here's Jamie and Elaine entering the cave. So uh, you go around the rock and uh, you start to enter the cave. And so uh, it's the only way in. There's no lighting obviously inside. So it's relatively limited pictures, but it was just really interesting. I mean, you've got uh, the for formations inside of, um, inside. It was beautiful. Uh, and all of this light is, you know, you can't take very good pictures because <laughs> there's no excess lighting. So it was the flashlight or your, your uh, camera flash, but it was, you know, magnificent. I mean, it would have been the way that the uh, Mayans 500 years ago, 700 years ago would have seen it. So here we are coming out of the cave again to give our canoe back to the gentleman who is trying <coughs> to eke out a living on the other side. So the other interesting thing I saw here, which made me interested was that here was a guy trying to figure out, and I'm sure he has it figured out, and there's engineers in the group that can maybe tell me, but he's trying to find a way that he can harness the water flow using, if you look to the left, the bottom end of an outboard motor to, to mooch like a turbine to generate electricity. So there's the turbine that he had going. He put a, a, a water shaft on it and uh, I don't know how it worked, but it was just, he seemed to uh, be able to make it work, but it was just interesting. You know, ingenuity would, you know, we would have to buy thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Well, what do they use? The bottom end of an outboard motor. <laughs> so, we left there and uh, we ended up heading to, again, we had to find a place to spend the night. This was one of the places we found, a uh, beautiful uh, little place on top of a hill and because it's not super hilly there. Uh, outside of our two rooms, there is Anne sitting in front of it, obviously. Elaine, typical morning, you know, we, we all start slowly with a little bit of mucilage or whatever and coffee and... Uh, you know, I think she's in paradise right now. You can see the smile on her face. Coffee. <laughs> Just a, a short pause if anybody has any questions or comments. What kind of bugs did you have down there? How many? That... I don't really remember bugs. I, I exactly wasn't buggy, David. Um, I, it was surprising. I, I don't remember bugs at all other than... Uh, Actually... Did you? When we were at Red Rock, they have uh, mosquito nets over the beds. Yeah. And I got into bed. Um, it was light out. So maybe I was going to, to lay down and read. And you looked up at the mosquito net, and there were spiders the size of huge spiders there were huge spiders sitting on top of the mosquito net and um and i went in and there was a uh um scorpion in the shower so yeah there there were a, quite a lot of insects it wasn't mosquitoes i don't remember mosquitoes but there were a lot of spiders and a lot of scorpions, but uh, you know. What time of year was it? April? April? Yeah. May, March? Beautiful. Yeah, so 90, uh, 2007, is that the year that we went? I think so, Elena, seven or eight, somewhere in there. Yeah. 
It's an it's typical, you know, you go south of the you're closer to the equator, you want to go whether it's Asia or whether it's Central America or whatever, it's uh, get close to the equator, you don't want to be there in the summer times. So, you know, we're it was a shoulder season. And the okay. did you see no the rain. glow bottoms? Say what? The glow bottoms in the caves? No. 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 I've seen I've seen them in in New Zealand and that, but yeah, that's, that's where I'd seen them, and I wondered if they would have them there, but you know. Yeah, no, it, these these caves were they were they they weren't set up for tourists or anything. Obviously, uh, you know, Belize is not a tourist area. You can't put cruise ships in there because you'll see in a few minutes it's very shallow. Um, so it's if anybody goes there, it's in the northern part of Belize, but in this southern area and where we were, you would almost not see any quote unquote tourists, you know. How about snakes, Barry? Any snakes? <laughs> no, if there were, I didn't see I didn't see any, Eric. They, no, okay. no issues like that at all, you know. And also, no. you know. People make a big deal. It's like out of crime. Uh, Belize does have crime, but it's mostly in Belize City. But when you yeah. leave and go to the areas where we're leaving, it's it's just so safe and no issues. Now, how about roads? Would you be able to drive north from Belize to, you know, into the Yucatan and uh, up to Cancun? Would you be able to drive to Cancun from there? It's a good question, Eric. I I do. I you could. My guess is yes, because the farther north in Belize you go, uh, if you go, if I go back to one of the original uh, pictures that I took of a map, the city, the the roads get more numerous, and so uh, the middle and the southern part is very original, where the northern part is more where the the tourists will go, because it's got tur it's got tourist infrastructure, right? And where we were, there's no tourist infrastructure. It's uh, so. It's, isn't it a popular diving place? Is that in the north? Yeah, you're going to see a few pictures. Jamie and I ended okay. up diving diving there also, and uh, um, where that's where we're going to start heading to now. Uh, we kind of did a little bit of the interior. The the diving's out at the islands, which are uh -huh. generally. So, well, isn't that where the big blue hole is? Yep, you're going to see it in a second, Elaine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let me just go back. I'll go on unless somebody else has any questions. Okay, so uh, just as a, a quick review, because this we're now going to head towards the Mayan type of things, and so you can see where Belize is, and you can see where Guatemala is in Mexico. Well. That area at one time was not a uh, specific country. It was the Mayan Empire, right? And so the Mayan Empire, if you go, there are little squares and little round dots. And the round dots are what they call the classical sites. And classical sites meaning that they go back 2,500 years. Then you also have what are called the post-classical sites, which go from 500 AD till 1500 AD. And uh, so those are the two, the two breakdowns. But the center there, where you see the name Tikal, Tikal is more or less the center of the Mayan empire at that time. It was the capital city, the Washington DC more or less. And where we are, you can see the yellow uh, star and that's where we're heading to next. And this is an area called Caracol. And it's one of the larger Mayan ruins in that area. But each one of those uh, dots, you've probably heard of <coughs> the Mayan places. So one of the things that's made uh, the Mayans uh, were much more appreciative of what the Mayans did was a technology called LIDAR. L-I-D-A-R, and it stands for Light Direction and Ranging, and it was developed by uh, the Hughes Aircraft Company in 1961 and was used by the Apollo 15 in 1971 as a measuring device for uh, figuring out uh, things on the moon. 
So I'm showing you this because the bottom picture is a LIDAR picture of the area you see on top. So when we see the picture on top, most of the time, we have no idea what's below that because it's all the trees, you know, a thousand years of trees. Well, they now the technology is there to be able to fly over an area and see what's underneath there. So they can now see roads and, and small temples and things. So here's another example of a LIDAR um, picture. And this was a Guatemalan city, um, and I don't remember which city, but I took it off a website. And it shows you where the roads were, where the temples were, and how people lived. And uh, it's something that now you look at you look at these sites totally differently because they can basically scrape away the trees and see what's underneath with this technology called LIDAR, L-A-D-A-R. So they also used this uh, quite extensively in Cambodia um, and why they were able to figure out that there were a million people living there. But here, this was just interesting. This is another picture I found on the internet, which I was a depiction of what they felt it, these areas would have looked like. So in the days when they had 120, 140,000 people living uh, in this area um, of Caracol, which we're going to go to next, um, how people, you know, how they were able to live, and what what it looked like, uh, but it, per, per, pretty amazing. A quick one: um, every one of these black dots is now a Mayan site a place where they have found people to be living underneath the jungle. And the highlighted places with the names on it are places that are known to us now as big places, but all the little dots are all the little Mayan villages. And so inside the red square there, which is an 800 mile square area, you had, they figure, 61,000 Mayan structures that they found in the jungle there, just in that little square. So it's, it's staggering uh, to think about what that civilization was actually like. You know, and this, there was no Belize and there was no Mexico, there was no Guatemala, but it was the Mayan empire. So where we're going to is a place called Caracol. And Caracol is one of, like Tikal, uh, is one of the larger uh, Mayan areas. And uh, when we found out about Caracol, <laughs> Jimmy can tell you, uh, we ended up driving again down one of these bumpy roads that we're all going, how the hell are we going to make it down? <laughs> this road is like, I don't know, 20 miles or something down this 20, road. 20, 25, yeah, like 25 miles, mostly dirt road. It's yeah. paved now. It's, yeah. it's, it's fully paved now. Right. But when we went down, it was just like they kept telling, like, oh, you got to go to the end. There's a really interesting place at the end. And we're going, oh, OK. So anyway, this is now the beginning of Caracol. And Caracol is just a um, it's an amazing place. What was amazing to us is that we were there basically by ourselves. Right. So we had this area and Caracol is 1500 feet above sea mm -hmm. level. And it's Caracol, they have now estimated it's 120 square miles in size. I mean, it's just unbelievably huge and massive. And they have estimated between 140 and 180,000 people live there. But we're, we're in this place that is just starting to open up and it's the, uh, the beginning, the beginning of, of, of something very interesting. So in 2009 is when they used LIDAR to kind of look at what was happening. <clears throat> and uh, there the ladies are going, there's no freaking way I'm walking up those stairs. So <laughs> Jamie and I went, went up. And so. Uh, I did go up and stayed in the shade, but I remember hell or high <laughs> water, I was going to go to the top. Yeah, so the, the views up at the top, you can imagine uh, the, the Mayans standing up here looking across this majestic place. I mean, it's just, it's, it's staggering how beautiful it is. And it's as original as you can possibly get. So here's my wife. She finally came up to the top 
And, uh, but you can see how close the jungle is to the backside of Caracol because Caracol, it was not found, I think it was 1937, it was found by a, um, a, a man looking for mahogany. Uh, for lumber, because this is all obviously before computers, before LIDAR, and before any of this. So if you think about 1937 is when they found it and they started moving the, the jungle back. But you can see the jungle right up to the back of Caracol. Um, every one of these places is uh, it's, it's magnificent, but the jungle you can see is just scraped off on the front side. So this is looking a little bit on the backside, and you can see what uh, you know trees do to these archaeological sites. It's just on the backside where they've excavated part of it, but you can see we're walking on soil that basically still needs to be excavated to, to be able to bring this place back totally back to life. It's, I, I don't know what else to say other than uh, it's, it's, it's a second wonder of the world. Here's a little bit of a perspective, you know, that, well, with what the trees are like there. I mean, it's Elaine standing in the roots down there. Uh, I mean, she's like a, a little popper girl. <laughs> uh, but that's a ficus. Yeah. That's a ficus tree. Those trees you grow in your house, <laughs> that's a ficus. <laughs> Yeah, and then you think about that tree, one of the seeds <laughs> laying on top of one of the Mayan pyramids and for you know a couple hundred years and how it just tears them apart. But uh, so Caracol is just a, it, it's if you like Mayan ruins and you want something unique that's not filled with tourists, it's one of those pr pretty spectacular places. Here I am up at the top resting trying to figure out what if I was a, a ruler what would I do <laughs> so anyway it's just a, a magnificent place some of the shots of the inside I don't know what any of this means other than uh, you know I think they were drunk when they made it because some of it's leaning I don't know over time they leaned it and then they added rocks on top but anyway See some of the, the vegetation, even though they've peeled it off the front, it doesn't take many years in the tropics for it to grow back. And so it's continuously having to be, uh, you know, cleaned up or to make it back into original. So from Caracol, because we spent, I don't know what, we spent a day, most of the day there. And because uh, it was a tough ride out, there's obviously no Motel 6s or anything nearby. And so we had to leave Caracol and it was another 20 miles out on a bumpy road. So where we were going next is where you started to ask before. Uh, this is again Belize and we were in the southern section. You can see where my pointer is and going over into San Ignacio. So there are very few roads down here. So we decided that we're gonna go back to Belize City and from Belize City, there is an island out here we wanted to go to called K Cocker. And uh, it's, it, it's just one of those fun places to be able to go. There's Jamie Lane buying tickets uh, before we jump onto our boat, which they are shuttle you out. So we're leaving Belize City here again, out, out of the harbor. And we're heading out to what is called K Cocker. And it's a, um, an island that is about eight miles long. And one of the interesting things is that the island got split in 1961 by a hurricane uh, because K. Cocker is, there, is, you're going to see in a few minutes, there is literally no hills or anything. So you can imagine a hurricane coming in. It just go wipes things off across. Well, K. Cocker got cut, in, got cut in half. And there is a canal now that I can't quite show it on the picture, but it's in the bottom left that splits the island. And that was from a hurricane back in 62. Uh, wrong direction. Um, 
So we get to Kay Cocker, and so we again have to find accommodations. So these are our accommodations. Uh, we ended up renting, <clears throat> renting this uh, cute little place. It was uh, right on the beach, two stories. And I think, didn't Elaine, you guys got the upstairs? I think so. I think so. Um, long I think time ago. Yeah, I think Jamie found it and he got the upstairs. So, you know, he who finds it gets first dibs. <laughs> it was, anyway, it was a it was a great a great place. So obviously uh, relaxing, trying to figure out what the stress of the day is going to be. But uh, this is in front of our uh, hotel on our veranda. And this is the view that we had looking out. So Kay Cocker is one of these sleepy little islands, typical Caribbean island where, um, you know, is, are there, is there shopping, Elspeth? No, <laughs> but, but there, but, but it isn't, it is an interesting place to go see. One so of the interesting things I remember about the island is there are very, very few motorized vehicles. It's it's all bicycles and walking. And sand streets, just like this. Just sand streets, yep. So there's the local police station, you know, very well marked, <laughs> just in case you need to use that for some reason. There's Miss Elaine standing in front of, I mean, the, the typical, the plants obviously love the tropics more than man loves the tropics, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the flowers and the, the vegetation is just spectacular. The ladies decided to have some tea in the afternoon. Typical K Cocker, there's nothing exciting happening on this island except you read a book and lay in the sand or lay around and uh, just it's just a just a great place to hang out. This was our favorite place to have dinner or lunch. It was called Rasta Pasta. But anyways, again, right on the beach there. My wife, we're now starting to shop for um, a dive because Jamie and I want to go for a dive because off the coast here is some of the most beautiful diving in the world. Um, there is a, uh, uh, a reef area or an atoll called the Turnef Atoll. And you can see where uh, Belize City is. And uh, so Jamie and I, you can see a few pictures uh, going out to this area. Just as a review, you can see Belize City there. And we ended up down in Placentia. You can see these are the roads. And then halfway down, we went into the forest here. And then we had to go all the way back to Bella Pond and then to San Ignacio and then drive here to Red uh, Black Rock. And your question before, Eric, you can see these are the roads, right? So you can see as you head north, there aren't a lot of roads. Could you drive all the way to Cancun? You'd need some good vehicles, but I'm sure you could. <laughs> so we ended up finding a dive boat and to take us out. And as we head out, um, we come across this uh, area where people, you know, you can see the water is relatively shallow, but this is a place you could play volleyball in the water. Uh, but it had a path for the boats to go out, obviously, but it's, it's such a shallow area. And that's why big boats, whether it's cruise ships or any of the other ships can't come in here because there's just no depth to it at all. So as we're leaving, you can see the atoll, even as you go out, um, it would be hard sometimes to see from a boat if you didn't have good charts, but uh, that is all a reef as far as you can see. There's Mr. Rossman in his full attire. <laughs> um, and we, I didn't get any, I didn't bring any underwater camera and neither did Jamie. So we don't have any underwater shots, um, it, but I think, we had some amazing diving, Jamie, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, it was, most of it is 30, 40 feet. Uh, I know David's going to ask me this question later, but it's 30, 40 feet deep, not real deep, uh, but extremely colorful. Uh, just, just one of those spectacular places to be able to see underwater. 
Uh, one of the places we didn't get to, and Elaine asked or mentioned it a few minutes ago, right part of this Turnif Reef area, this is called the Blue Hole, and it's called the Great Blue Hole, and it's a marine sinkhole. It's about a thousand feet across and 400 feet deep. So boats can come in here and you can dive this area. We did not. Um, I, it, I sh Go ahead. It did not used to have any entry. It was a, it was a complete circle and Jacques Cousteau blew out an opening in order to get get into the hall with a boat and dive. So I, I thought that was interesting that Jacques Cousteau was the person that punched a hole in it to get inside to dive. The picture, there are three pictures there and obviously I took them off the internet, but I found them interesting. The one on the right gives you a kind of a, a cross cut of what the blue hole looks like, right? So, it's 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 interesting, you know. I mean, to see this uh, hole in the middle of the ocean, and you got you can punch your way down through it. But it's 400 feet deep uh, if you want to dive it, um, and precarious in some areas, but overall just a a big big hole in the middle of this atoll. So here we are back in uh, our favorite place, having a couple of cervezas because we're about to be leaving in, uh, and having to go back home. So here is our last shot and uh, nothing very interesting other than this is basically uh, uh, the Caribbean. You know, beautiful plants, sailing, uh, funky boats that people have dug out, but this is the actual Caribbean, so. So there's, obviously lots of islands that you can go to. Uh, we chose the more laid back option of um, Key Cocker. However, the vast majority of people tend to go to um, San Pedro, um, up north, a place called Ambergy K. And there's actually a really, really large expat community up there. And it's got paved roads and it's, it's Caribbean, obviously, and it's got, um, you know, diving and all that but it's much more, it's not Cancun, it's not huge hotels and that kind of thing. It's still low rises, but many, many people who, when they say they go to Belize, often wind up at that more northerly island. And we chose for the more tranquilo, key cocker experience. Yeah, I have, I have friends that have bought a condo there, but I don't know what part of Belize. Probably up at uh, uh, San Pedro. Yeah. Very likely. That's where, as I say, a huge expat community. And of course, the because it was British Honduras, the entire, you can see it up at the top there, San Pedro. Uh, of course, the language of the entire country is English. So um, it's really easy for Brits, Aussies, Americans, um, you know, to go there. And they, they drive on the left side of the road. The steering wheels on the right side of the car, and um, it. Despite you know, we loved it so much when we were there. Despite the fact that there's quite a lot of poverty in Belize, when we got home, when I, we got, I I did some looking into buying real estate there, and it's very expensive. It's it, I thought it would be inexpensive, but it's not. It's quite pricey. Yeah. Could, you, was, could you tell us, you know, that when you went to the Mayan ruins, like, where did they get the, ro the rocks from? And some of them looked as if they'd been carved, you know, they're squares or flat, and then other rocks just looked like rocks. And, and like, how did they, how did they stick the rocks together, I guess? What, well, I mean, you know, take the rocks together. yeah, but there was build them up against one another. You know, no, but there was there was something between the rocks, you know, sand or maybe I don't know what, you know, like well, concrete, or like a mortar. Yeah, I can't I can't tell you about Belize per se, but I know when we've been to Mexican uh, ruins uh, that they were very explicit that they were extremely good stonemasons and they were able to put rock directly on rock and. Uh, and build up their temples. They didn't. They didn't have concrete. 
or mortar. Not your picture. No, no, no. Which one? And some some of the Mayan ruins are reconstructions. I mean, everything was basically there, but it had been so ripped up by the jungle that when they started removing all the jungle growth, as any rocks that had crumbled down, they put them back into place where they thought they would be. And um, so that might be the difference between the rounder rocks and the squared rocks. Yeah. Uh, but, and I, I do, I'm sure we were told where the rock was sourced from, but I don't that know. was 40 I, years ago. No. Would it not be limestone, the rocks? Uh, probably, maybe. It looks like limestone to me, the rocks. Well, think about what that area looks like now with the jungle, right? And so when they started to build, that's what the, that was the palette they had, right? And so now you have this jungle, everything is overgrown. Okay, now I'd like you to source me 20 rocks that are 20 feet by 40 feet. And you go, okay, where? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's something that we have not even a concept of, of how they did this because it's, it is, it's so many things in the world are so unbelievable that it keeps getting lost every 500,000 years of what we have learned, you know, as the millennium has gone along. Hey, Barry, you said to me you were scared of heights. How come you ended up on the top of that Mayan temple? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to understand, Elvis, I, I push myself sometimes. And it's, <laughs> It's well, that, he was sitting down because he yeah, fainted at the top. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's uh, you know, stuff like this is, I it will only be there once in my life, most likely. And so whether yeah. it's a church I got to climb to the top of, you know, I just, you got to, you got to do what you got to do. Like Eric yeah. going to Kilimanjaro, would you do it again? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Great slideshow, Barry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was, it was beautiful. Great, great to re relive it again. Yep, trip down memory lane. Well, this is, what, this is what memories are about. That's right. <laughs> I think it was particularly nice that you you weren't inundated with other folks. You you know you were mo mostly on your own, and that that's terrific. I, you know, that, that trip in particular, we seem to have just about every place we visited all to ourselves, which absolutely made it that much more special. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, what is it? It's a drug trafficking and oh. crime or something? I, I don't know. <laughs> none, that I, none that we saw. Did they charge you any entrance fees at any of these locations, the Maroons? What are, no, what are entrance fees? I don't even remember. I don't remember. I remember we had to pay to rent the the canoes to go into the cave. <laughs> that was that was a friendly over overweight American who is looking to make the money to live there. Yeah. And uh, he owned that. He owned that cave. Yeah, he owned it. He owned that big he owned a big piece of property out there and he found the cave. I think he was Canadian, yeah. but I, I don't, you know, there's a lot of things I've forgotten, so I could be wrong. There's also an interesting thing that I don't fully understand, and that is there's a very large Quaker population in Belize. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, yeah. we were, when we were in uh, uh, San Ignacio, uh, which is on the Guatemalan border, I remember them telling me, they're loud here, these are all run by the Quakers. And I'm going, Quakers in Belize? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. One in Costa Rica as well. Really? A very large one, yeah. Anyway, it's a... So, like, there must be people then, guys. who are actually clearing these Tom. sites or that, yeah. right? They must... Tom, nice to thank you for coming, Tom. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, okay Tom. Thank you, Tom. Cheers. I think, Eric, what, what it is, there are organizations around the world, and UNESCO being one, that they have money that set aside. Uh, you know, I mean, these places are, I mean, the, the mic is on. No, yes. 
I, the governments don't have enough money no, to yeah. make this thing, you know, as beautiful. Yeah. I mean, look at Caracol. I mean, they're just scraping the beginning of it, right? And sure. so, you know, to try to keep this up, I mean, like David asked, is there any interest fee? Well, there's no, maybe there is now, but how much can you charge, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it's like I said, there's no cruise ships, so there's no reason for 5,000 people to get off their, their right, uh, right. Yeah. able to shuttle in here. So. I was in Tikal about um, in 2005 in, um, in February, I think it was. And it, it had quite a few tourists there. We had a, a guide that took us to it. looked very much like the Caracol that you just showed. Exactly. And, and there, there were some temples where they were ex, excavating some, you know, taking some of the roots off the trees, off the um, temples. And they had just found these, this whole little cluster of a little community. There, Gene, there's Tikal, right? Right in, right yeah, in the middle. Right yeah, right in the middle. We, right. yeah. So Tikal is kind of like the, it's like I said before, it's, it's the Washington DC. It's the, the yeah. central area yeah. for the whole Mayan uh, structure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was there also when I was uh, visiting Guatemala. Yeah. And I think some of the places in Belize that you, you showed, maybe we, I, I recognize it. So maybe we have been there too. I just have to look at my, uh, at my uh, pictures. Can we see your pictures? So where did you guys <laughs> to get to Tikal? How did you get there? Where did you fly into? We, well, we were, um, we probably flew from, um, I'm not sure where we, we flew to there. We were there for two or three nights. Right, Tikal is a major tourist place. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why we went. The people that planned it, you know, was to see the Mayan ruins. I, I remember a lot of mosquitoes, and only if you go high to the mountains, it goes away. <laughs> we considered, if I remember correctly, we considered or did some research about going to Tikal. You can do it from Belize, but we heard that the road, there were a lot of banditos, and that coming yes. from the coming from the east in was not as safe as if you came in the other way. Um, you know, from Guatemala City up to Tikal. So we decided not to, not to take that trip, if I recall correctly. Well, I had gone to the um, travel clinic to see about shots before this trip, and they handed out a, I don't know, 20 page thing about all the towns that we were going to be in. And, and for Tikal, they said, do not go to this one destination of, um, of ruins. And that was clearly on our itinerary and I was a little concerned because it said there were too many bandits and tourists were being held up and robbed and all that but there was absolutely no problem so but mm -hmm. but probably there had been yeah okay. you know, the bigger the airport is near these ruins the more you're going to have people getting there Right. And the farther yeah. it is away, I mean, just this map shows you the big high points, and these are all the ones that you and I understand as far as, uh, um, you know, as far as sites. But if if one wanted to actually see some sites, I mean, every one of those dots is a site. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, Barry, I got it. I got to sign off. Um, great job. It was really fun uh, to relive it. Hello, everybody, and and. Uh, or Mark, Amy. Thanks for the input. Yeah, I'll, I'll be yeah. signing off also. Goodbye, Elaine. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, bye, Barry. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Barry, what, is, what was the currency? Uh, the Belizean dollar, but it, you used American dollars. Okay. You know, it. it uh, there was no problems. I mean, their their interest is to make dollars. I mean, the Belizean dollar, as you know, I mean, it's just like the, the Vietnamese dong. I mean, it, it's like other than toilet paper, it has no value outside of their countries. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's 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 like I said, it, it, there's so much exploring still to do in that region, whether it's Mexico or what, you know, whatever it happens to be. But yeah. it, uh, 
Well, why don't we call the office when they get done here on this program and, and yes, you know, tell them that we're waiting to move and, and wonder if the room is ready. The cleaning stuff. Good, Jean. <laughs> we didn't know what you were talking about. It wasn't me. <laughs> that was that. No, that was that. That was other Jean. That's Jean. Oh, yeah, Jean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> John and Jean. Did you? Yeah. You Jackers, while you were there. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Jean? Did you see any Jaguars? No. I mean, that would have been, that was kind of, you know, what we'd like to have seen, but you notice as we're walking around, a typical cat, he doesn't want to be okay. near you. Right? And for us to be able to see one, oh God, I'd, I'd rather have a fence between me and him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would think so. He must not have been hungry. <laughs> no kidding. No, it's just, I mean, it's just the, the views when you're up there to see the original jungle like it was maybe when the, before the first Mayan even decided to, to build one of these temples. I mean, it, it, the, under, the undertaking is beyond anything that you can imagine. It's like the Egyptians, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting part of the world and we, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's our, my, as you know, by now, my modus operandi is to make the destination and then make the trip after I make the destination. <laughs> <laughs> Not to always put everything into order because it never happens that way. Yeah. Well, you left out on some of those little cot well, they're not even cottages, little huts or little bungalows. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the, if there are no tourists, it's not a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. So if if you went to what Jamie was saying in the northern part of uh, of, of the country where most people go, let me let me find the map real quick. Um, I mean that that is where everybody goes when somebody says, "Yeah, I've been to Belize." I said, "Really? Where have you been?" Okay, well. You know, they they end up um, going to areas that. Uh, let me just share this real quick. Uh, here we go. Yeah, right up at the top there, of 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 Belize, and what Eric was asking about were the roads. And if you look up at the the top of Belize, there are a lot more roads, and you could probably drive all the way to Cancun, Eric. Uh, but it, my interest was not where where the tourists can go. I always like to look for, where does the tourist not go? What else is interesting? Yeah. So yeah. it's in the Southern part of the country. Yeah. And, and we all know a guy by the name of McAfee, uh, the antivirus protection. Yes. After, after he sold uh, McAfee, sold uh, John McAfee, sold uh, that, to Norton, to Norton or to Symantec, uh, he took his money and he moved to Belize, outside of San Ignacio. And so uh, he he spent many years there. I don't know where he is now, but uh, I I can see why. It's it's I mean it's is it's primitive. It's it's amazing, and the country is is not uh, communist. It's not the dictatorship. It's a, a benevolent democracy. I think is more the right word for it. Mm. Wait a minute, Barry. Wasn't there was there not some kind of scandal with my cafe? Oh yeah. <laughs> Remember, that's yeah. why he moved to Belize, yeah. wasn't it? There was a little, little bit of tax problems. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> now I remember. There you go. Well, it's just when you get a lot of money, then taxes become real important. Yeah, you want to keep it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. By the way, enjoyed your uh, your beer. Tax yep. explanation you sent me. I did. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a, it's a little sad. <laughs> oh, hey, Barry, could you, are you able to put on the screen now to show the ladies how the, like the lady we met in our hike on Friday, what these ladies should be doing to help us? Can you, I, I, you it, can it, put it, that slide up? It's unfortunately, Eric, it's on my cell phone. I didn't put it on oh, okay, the computer. Um, you don't want to know it anyway, ladies. They're just trying to rub it in. Oh. <laughs> no, there She's was... carrying two mattresses in her head and two in her back. 
And oh, she's carrying that up for this guy to climb this mountain. So if no, he falls, he falls a, in a mattress. It's just a rock. It's not a mountain. It's just a rock. But <laughs> Elspeth, she had one thing that you cannot say anything bad about. She had the biggest smile on her face doing Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> That's dedication for you. It's dedication. Nope. But he couldn't have been a good climber. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who cares when she's carrying that much it reminded me of an African woman with everything on her yeah, head yeah that's what it reminded me of <laughs> anyway it was all right Barry and, and Eric and Story have another meeting at two o'clock so I have to go but okay, um, yeah. uh, can we set a, a time uh, maybe just email a bit back and forth to set a time for you to have a look and maybe help me a little bit with the with the Malawi presentation. Okay. Yep. End, end of the day, Wendy would be good. Like, uh, you know, my time, let's say six, five, six, seven, somewhere in there, which would be eight, nine in your, in the, in that time frame, if that's yeah. okay with you, Eric. Okay. Can we do it? Can we do it Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday? Okay. Or Friday or Saturday? Thursday, I have other stuff. Um, around that time but okay. uh, I mean, I'm just pulling up my uh, calendar let me just look at it. I don't think that's a problem you know the, these days the calendar is not very full <laughs> no I know me neither I just have random stuff right but no uh, Wendy you've got a PC right I do yeah so Barry would be the best because I've got a Mac oh okay. so I do it in keynote where Barry oh. does it in PowerPoint so he would be yeah. the best to if you're going to do it in PowerPoint, yeah. yeah. I started make, putting it together in PowerPoint. Yeah, either Wednesday or Friday, uh, Wendy, you pick the day. Okay, okay, let's do Friday. That'll give me a little more time to kind of get my, my thoughts in order. Okay, so okay. Fr Friday, uh, your time, 7 o'clock? What? Uh, my time, 7 o'clock? Sure. Well, I'm asking, what, is that okay? Oh, oh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Whatever works best for you, is that going to interfere with your dinner at 6? <laughs> Well, no, dinner is easily movable these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Seven o'clock Friday. And it's five o'clock my time then. Oh, are you, no, are uh, really? Well, are we, what, Calgary, what, how far? It's only, an hour, it's only an hour to Elspeth. Oh, okay. Then six, yeah, well, I only live a few miles away, so we're both. In the if you want to do five, I can do six. No, but no, six, five, five, uh, six o'clock, five o'clock my time, your six o'clock your time, Wendy, is perfect. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Hey, guys, you're not going dancing. It's only a, <laughs> it's only a, <laughs> <to me. laughs> Here. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. And are you going to, are you going to Zoom or you want me to Zoom? I, I can, well, I can send you a Zoom invite. Yeah, why don't you do that? Because your Zoom lasts longer than mine. My Zoom only lasts 40 minutes. Your Zoom. Yours is the free one. I have the free one. I don't have a pay Zoom. So can we use your Zoom? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know they keep hey guys. Thanks, Thanks a lot. can we Skype later? What pet? Can we Skype tonight? Yeah, we can Skype tonight. Okay. What time? Okay. Um, probably five o'clock my time, six o'clock yours. Perfect. Okay. 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 Thanks, everybody. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.